back to another edition of the Egg Timer Hour, episode three, and boy, have we got a good one. Yep. Boys, women, children, girls of all ages, in your spaces, and people of all races, it's the Egg Timer Hour. I want to set this, but it doesn't keep good time, so we're ditching the Egg Timer, and we're just going with the plain old phone with alarm. So suck it. You could all right. You could pretend to do it, maybe. Yeah, I thought it was a little novelty. I thought you of all people would appreciate that. But anyway, I'm just we're not I using got, it. I, okay, fine. <laughs> I see, I got We've got it. a special guest tonight. Our first guest. Real quick, we'll go around the room real quick. Say hello, uh, C Square. Greetings. Awesome. Sugar Dave, say what's up. What's up? Something from Sandman. Go Cats. And our guest, his name, you might know him as Sincerely Iris, but... Another alias would be Todd Murray, uh, a friend and peer uh, of mine for over 20 years. He's just released a new album. I don't know how many albums he's released, but it's been a lot. <laughs> Love in a Time of Disaster released June 2nd, 2023. Please welcome Todd Murray. What's up? Thanks hey, for Todd. Thanks for coming, welcome, Todd. Welcome, Todd Murray. Thank you. <laughs> so, Todd, this is your first... Is this the first record with the band? Everything else has kind of been solo. Pretty much, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But, you know, before we get too much into that, I feel it incumbent upon me to discuss our relationship because that's kind of our thing here is we're all kind of connected musically, it seems. And yeah. uh, Todd and I met in college 20 years, 20 plus years ago now. Was it 2001? I think so, yeah. Like, uh, it was just a fall and a spring semester we spent together that forged a 20 year musical relationship. It's pretty weird, isn't it? It's like, I, I'll speak for myself. I feel like you're like a cousin to me. Like, I feel that kind of closeness. Yeah, for sure. I do remember, uh, we went to Moorhead. I don't know how much we're allowed to just you say what you want. That. Yeah. And, uh, the way that Moorhead did their, um, meal cards was like, I uh, later, later I went to a college where it was like, they gave you your meals for every single day. But I think Moorhead, the way that Moorhead did it was like, here's $500 for the whole semester. So like <laughs> a freshman in college was like, that was gone in like a month, maybe. Yeah. So I, I do remember you, uh, I mean like, yeah, I can't go down there today. I don't have any money. You'd be like, oh, I'll buy your lunch. <laughs> like oh, yeah. multiple, multiple times you paid for me to you eat. You want cheeseburgers? Here's some cheeseburgers. Burger yeah. King. It was always Burger King. I would yeah. always get like three cheeseburgers and onion rings. And everything yeah. was overpriced. I do remember that. You'd go to the cafeteria and it'd be eight dollars and you'd get a bowl of cereal and some eggs. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, the golden cafeteria. kid with the card. I would just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Swipey. That seems like a Did you take much... all the did you take all the guitar classes and stuff like that like Brandon did? Or yeah. Did? I never I never finished, but yeah, that year I was a I was a music major. Yeah way in over my head um me too. i couldn't really read music so it was like thrown in there with all the band kids that have been, <laughs> been reading it their whole life yeah um, so how did you feel like being thrown into that like i think you approached it the same way i did where you just wanted to learn about music to help it like contribute to your songwriting and just the way that you just to be more knowledgeable about it because it's what you love yeah. And then you find yourself, it's like, well, the only way that I can do that is if I play jazz guitar. Like yeah. that was, that was the option. Yeah. I was like a big Jeff Buckley fan and I know that he studied jazz. So I was like, oh, uh, that's what I'll do. And I didn't have any idea what I was doing really, but uh, yeah. And I would, I, I would study quite a lot, but I'd also just end up writing songs half of the time instead of studying. Uh, so that was probably not good either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta have fun. I mean, that's what John Mayer yeah. did. You know what I mean? John Mayer went to Berkeley and wrote songs most of the time. That's what he did. So yeah. that's not that bad of an idea. I mean, do you think yeah. that that knowing, like getting into like the theory has helped your songwriting? I think so. Yeah. Do you think it gives you more like um, colors to paint with? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I really like jazz chord progressions. So I still, mm -hmm. I think I've still sewn a lot from those. Um, even though I couldn't master them or like totally understand them all the time, just a little bit that I could be like, Oh, I, I can steal this little, this little nugget. And put it in yeah, the song there's an augmented diminished weirdness there that kind of <laughs> give you a color yeah. to, to, to 
progressions that could well stand out. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I listened to your album, Loving in, in a Time of Disaster, man. And I listened to it on the treadmill. And it was great treadmill music. I'll say that. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I thought, I just really, I mean, you're, you're, are you the, you're the slide player, I'm guessing. Yeah. Man, I just want to say that you're an amazing slide player, dude. Like, you do stuff with oh. a slide that I didn't know could be done with a slide. It's great stuff. Thank like, you. The thing you do at the end of the song, Thorns, some weird, you know what I'm talking about? It's, it's like yeah. A, it's a weird, it doesn't even sound like a guitar. He's never heard like, the song before. He doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm just saying, you know, the, exactly what I'm talking about. It's right. like yeah. a weird, maybe to you it's nothing, but to me I was like, what in the world? And I really love, yeah. like, you know, the, I don't, it's, it seems like you kind of carry the melody with, with it too. Like, you know, that's a, a lot of your melodies come from you playing slide and kind of making the melodies from there. I think so. Um, especially on the slide guitar. So um, I play this weird thing right here, the four string yeah. guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to grab it. Uh, yeah. This oh, thing no, no, no. We didn't want you to play. We just wanted uh, you to talk. No, I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an open, open tuning. Um, what tuning is it? So like open E. So it's, yeah. I, I don't know if it's there right now, but uh, E, B, E. And then Thorns is like G sharp. Uh -huh. So a lot of the times up. You know, I'll play, kind of play the chords here and then do a little melody on the top string. Right. And where it's kind of, I was wondering that too, because it seems like you're doing two things at once and that thin neck probably helps with being able to kind of play the rhythm and the melody at the same time. Yeah. Or, My cousin yeah. built this for me. I was talking to him the other day and like, uh, somebody's like, oh, you're a slide player. And I'm like, I don't know that I am. It's like. <laughs> you feel like you're cheating a little bit. Yeah. This is such a caveman. It's like, if it's like if you told Fred Flintstone, he actually drove a car that's what this yeah. guitar is right here <laughs> I, don't it definitely, know. I don't know definitely about have, that like you have to have some kind of thing to 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 do it like that go ahead c square i'm sorry all right i i thought of lots of questions because when i listened to it i was like what is this guy doing i mean i'm a guitar player myself i mean oh, and cool. i love making weird sounds and but you're like what what kind of gear are you what, what kind of amp you do, do you use mostly um a lot i have an epiphone Right at him. Uh, oh, okay. Junior, uh -huh. which is like a just a tiny, tiny thing. Yeah. I think it's five watts. Um, right. It's been modified a little bit, not really. Just it is comes with class one A. Now. Is that class A circuitry on that? You I think? don't know. I think usually so. Usually, those <laughs> old kind of Gibson Epiphones are like real touch sensitive. I know uh, zero things. about what you mean when you say class A. It's it's the type of circuitry that's I don't like Gibson Gold Tones have them. Mm -hmm. um and there it's just real know, for me it's the sweetest tone because it's it's just there's less between it's kind of like it's a, nice it's it gets super loud um has nothing nothing on it no reverb or anything like that it is yeah. a reissue i think it came out a couple years ago yeah. and at five um, watts you're going to be able to hit some gain stages easy to yeah you wouldn't be able to do you use any pedals at all yes the other the other amp i kind of use for the album is, is a supro uh Delta. oh yeah those are great um so some of the songs I was kind of using both of those at the same time. When I okay. play live, it's with it. When I do play with the band, it's a three piece. And uh, so we were doing those two amps in stereo. So I have a, mm. a boss digital delay that kind of does the stereo feel mm -hmm. thing when you, when you hit it. So I was using it for that and just kind of thicken up the sound. Um, pedal wise, I use some stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plug in some things and see what happens. What's your main like gain like gain pedal? I got the Soul Food that I use. Dude, I, I use the lead. same. I use the same thing. I use this, I use the Soul Food. That thing's great. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if I should try other things, but I mean, it does. I don't know the Soul Food. Good. I got the base Soul Food, and it's uh -huh. uh, it's yeah. It's, I use it for guitar though. It's great. I love the Soul Food. I use oh, it primarily oh. as my gain because it's just so sweet to it. Huh. Nice. Um. um do you use like any reverb at all, like reverb pedals, things like that? Um, don't. It kind of makes me mad that the Epiphone doesn't have reverb on it, but the Supro does have a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I use the digital delay, the Boss digital delay, and uh, the car my carbon copy kind of blew out a little bit here recently, but that was my main like delay, mm -hmm. the other delay. And uh, so I got uh, these JHS pedals. I got the delay in that one. Oh yeah, JHS. I mean, they make great pedals. Yeah. Um, 
but I put stickers on them because they look exa- they're all identical, and it was really confusing on my pedal board. Oh <laughs> yeah, they did. So, yeah, they did the that. white one. Hit the white one. Yeah, they yeah. did that white. Everything was white. Like uh, yeah, they had those ones that came out. Hmm. But they spent um, a lot of money on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you primarily only use mind. that guitar? Do you use other guitars too? Uh, I have a Fender Modern Thin Line Telecaster. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you can pull that out if you want, but it's like a Telecaster with P90s. So it looks oh, like okay. this weird hybrid, right. um, hybrid Fender Gibson thing. It's got all. It's got four knobs, just like a Gibson would. Right. It's real weird. Do you? I saw that you're sponsored by Breedlove as well. Is that still true? I think so. So, <laughs> oh, I'm Don't a big play Breedlove. Their shit. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a big Breedlove fan. I've got a Breedlove, and I love it. So I just I saw that now. Yeah, they sound. They, I mean, for studio work, they sound really good. All yeah, the, I don't take mine out of the house or anything. Yeah, because it's 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 great for studio work though. It, they, so I mean, great guitars, but uh, but kind of like this the signature sort of has become this guitar. It's just mm-hmm. what people notice me for. So, uh, yeah. Like even I went to Nashville a couple of years ago to to talk to the Breedlove dudes and for him to take some photos or whatever. And he saw the he took some with the Breedlove, but he also saw that and he's like, "Dude, let's take some with that right there." I'm like, okay, it doesn't say Breedlove, but okay, I know. whatever you want to do. <laughs> it's not going to cancel my sponsorship, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Huh, so you've also cool. got the uh, the Fender Strat with the Sierra Sunburst. I do, There's, yeah. That, that was, that, that, why'd that make you laugh? <laughs> you never get it out no because i i i really don't play it a whole lot anymore but that was like my first electric it wasn't my it was my first nice electric my dad was like i'll help you pay for either your half of your first car or half of your first guitar and i chose the guitar and uh and i didn't have a girlfriend after that but uh, <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was so cool because we had like we had the same guitar almost oh yeah like it's a little different mine is just a black strat but it was it was always it was always weird like seeing another guitarist in college like you ne- you never know how to approach somebody because usually musicians are pretty uh i don't know egocentric egomaniacs or you just never know yes and it's like i don't know you know what i mean like there's some guys like there was uh roger coleman he had a long he plays with the justin moore band now did you know that it's a country mm-hmm. band probably don't listen to him He's, uh, I don't he had a long, long, ponytail. Had a long ponytail, like pretty looking dude. He looks, I remember him. Yeah, uh, I don't remember. I but uh, I was, I was always kind of afraid to approach him. And I remember the first time he did, it was like he's from Letcher County, and he's like, "How y'all doing?" He talked like <laughs> this, and, he's, and the coolest dude too, man. Like yeah. it, was, it was, there was just so much talent around that place. It was crazy. And then he totally slays on guitar also. Yes. And he makes them too. Like he builds oh, really? them. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Custom uh, shout out to Roger Coleman guitars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to Google that. And he's electric kind of guy. Yeah. Hmm. Him and his cousin, Steve Goff. I think he plays a lot in Nashville. Yeah, it was, it was definitely intim- intimidating going in there. Most of the guys were really nice though. I do remember yeah. that. The guitar players. I didn't really talk to like other instruments right. so much. I got to know some of them. <clears throat> Sam Man, you want to say something? Yeah, on the uh, I'm more on the consumer end of the music spectrum, and so I just have to ask who you would list as uh, influencers. Mm. Uh, I grew up, grew up on a lot of like classic rock and grunge and stuff like that. I always liked the Smashing Pumpkins when I was a kid. Oh, nice. Um, but I don't know. Billy Howardell is uh, responsible oh, yeah. for my proudest moment as a father. <laughs> uh, my what does son, that mean? Uh, these guys have heard the story, and I won't bug you with that right now. Cause we just no, go ahead, around. man. Tell it again. That's, um, we were, he was going around with Ashes Divide, and we were down at Riverbend. And uh, so, if you bought the CD, you could do the little signing meet and greet stuff. And, uh, my son asked him if the bass player from the Judith video, uh, was single, <laughs> I think. <is> what he <laughs> asked and he's like, he got the biggest kick out of that. He slapped the table and rocked back and laughed. He goes, you know what? I think she is. You want her phone number? He was, he was really cool. You know, my son was uh, probably nine or 10 years old 
kind of had the Harry Potter look <laughs> going at the time. So it was it was a good day. Sounds like it's he's got a, good taste. I, I like that girl. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> I, was just, I was just telling you, like, the, I, as far as I could get down on my commute, uh, drive and listen to the to the album, um, like that first song, it kind of put me in mind of, um, like, I don't know if you're familiar with the show Preacher, but it's like if they had a a, another season, that could be the, the <laughs> instead of the Willie Nelson song. It was like, it, it seemed like something that was scored right oh, into cool. it. The, it's coming back to get you now yeah and yeah right. and then uh, love on the screen seemed like it was very uh contemporary to what you would hear on uh like uh alt nation or oh cool uh, i don't want to sound too generic but like uh one of the the newer cell phone commercials or something like that you know i mean it sounded yeah. very like, you know sound like it like anything that was written last week but then i get on further down it was like i I could hear, uh, and this was just me. I'm not saying this was influenced to you, but like I could hear a little bit of a Bono, a Tom Petty, uh, a uh, lot of a lot of stuff felt a little bit like highly suspect to me too. Uh, hmm. I don't know if that's fair or not in your mind, but it but it, that's a good spot for me, you know. So I mean, well, I find out what is highly suspect. Is that a band or? A... Yeah, yeah. The, um, uh, I'm trying to think of some of. The, songs that um their biggest one that put them kind of got the most airplay was called lydia and then hello my name is human i don't know if you're oh yeah. you mean like lydia oh lydia that's not who you're talking about no, uh, i don't know they're they're pretty awesome i like them a lot yeah i'll have to check it out but definitely definitely tom petty for sure I've listened to a lot there, there was there was and just one more thought and then i'll turn it over to the rest of the guys for a little bit but there was hmm. It, I there was something in there too on down. I can't remember which song it was because I was driving at the time. So I was listening to it, and it was like it had. It reminded me of the vinyl records I would listen to, like in the early '80s pre glam rock. You know, and it, it was like I could hear that song being opened up by a band for like Bob Seger or something like that back in the day. <laughs> yeah, and it was just, cool. it was really cool. It came out a lot of different directions, and it was you know it was and but still had your own sound and, and stuff like that. And very cool. Album. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. Well, you kind of touched on something I wanted to talk about. And Todd already mentioned like really early on, you didn't even flinch when you said it. I think it's cool. You said, I steal, I steal uh, this little part and this little part. And we've talked about this before, how to steal like an artist. Like it's, yeah. like, it's a whole book about it, but it's just like most people who write music and talk about things that they write, like are not so keen to say something like, well, I stole this thing from here and this, that, and the other, because you're not really stealing. It's like it, you like a thing. So you take that thing and you do something to it to, to make it your own thing. It's common yeah. hearing. It, yeah. It's like, it's not even imitation really. I mean, it is flattering, but it's not, it's, it's not even like ripping off. It's, it's using it creatively. Um, with that in mind, uh, the first, uh, it's coming back to, to to get you now was there any kind of like levy breaks in mind when you were doing that um because the drums some... the drums don't really do levy breaks at all but it just feels very much like levy break when the levy breaks to me there's a led zeppelin song that i think i was thinking of when i just when i not really when i was writing it it was more like when when i was sending the mixer references you know what i mean like i kind of like this um I think it's your time is going to come. The Led Zeppelin song. Mm. That's on their yeah. first album or second one or something like that. Um, so that one, that one a little bit. And then I remember one of the references was uh, a White Stripes song. I think it's. Okay. It's, there's, that. there's no home for you here. Yeah. The elephant. I was thinking um, a little Jack White earlier when, uh, when I was listening to something, it was almost like um, Billy Gibbons wrote a chord progression for Jack White. And one of those songs is what I was thinking. It was like, I remember those two. Yeah, I mean, that's a good writing uh, trick anyways, is to be like, what if these two people work together? Two people that would never, like, those yeah. two, two guys would, but like, oh, you know, I've done songs like, oh, what if it's Gillian Welch and, I don't know, Jenny Mitchell or Gillian Welch and Jack White or something like that. Yeah. Um, just start <laughs> with that frame of reference in mind and see what that would sound like. Um, but yeah, as far as the stealing goes, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I remember reading, like, an interview with... Uh, the guy from Queens of the Stone Age and saying like, 
and Billy Corgan always saying that like it's so important to be original and we, we're original bands and we can't sound like anybody else and same with he said that about the Foo Fighters um, but then later they'll be like like 10 15 years later they'll be like well I stole this from this song actually mm-hmm. yeah. like but when you first hear them talk especially when you're kind of impressionable you're like oh my god I have to make up everything out of nowhere has to be you know what i mean and it has to be amazing yeah <laughs> so that's intimidating, it's intimidating yeah, I, I was, that. for somebody who has no creativity like that i couldn't imagine that kind of creative pressure <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> i mean i think there's great. like i mean really originality comes from like you're writing something that's coming out of you right i mean that and cause yeah, yeah you it's your touch voice the, the way you touch the guitar itself is you like I could play a song by anybody, but it's going to sound like me playing it. And I heard a oh, interview with, with uh, Nuno Betancourt the other day, and he was talking about he got to play Eddie Van Halen's <laughs> rig. I think you sent this to me. He's and, pissed off. And he was like super pumped. I'm finally going to get, going to get to sound like Eddie Van Halen. And then he plays it, and it sounded like him. And I think that's kind of the goal as a musician is like, that voice i know when i touch the guitar it's different than when bondo touches or when you know when sugar dave touches it so i think that's kind of the beauty of it is somebody asked uh steve Vai about like if he thought uh i think john frashani was talking about this but um somebody asked steve Vai if he thought kurt cobain was a, a good guitar player and he said well he was good enough to say what he needed to say i'm like that's the the best approach you can have to like you know just i don't know it's not even if somebody's good or not, I guess it's, I don't know. That's yeah. just a weird question. Everybody's different. I would say I everybody that, has their own voice. You have a sound that ushered in a revolution. You know, to me, that's, that's, yeah. that was a pretty big deal. He did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you did, all right. did he, <laughs> did he know? Them boys could have made it. <laughs> I, I think like the biggest the lesson I ever learned was, uh, I remember I've always been a, I guess when it comes to amps, I, I don't guitars. I'll buy any guitar, but amps, you know, the fifteen hundred dollar amps, two thousand dollar amps, and I can't think of his name. Bondo. Uh, we saw this kid. He was like fourteen at the time, and he was playing mm-hmm. through a little cheap solid state amp, and had like a Squire guitar. And that kid was killing it. He had a tone like I'd never heard in my life. And that's the moment it hit me. Like it's the play. Like Chris, like C Square was saying, it's. It's who's playing, not what equipment they're using. Because yeah. yeah. do you know what I'm talking don't about? Don't get Bondo? me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'd rather use a tube amp all day. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I can't. I it can't is remember that kid's fingers. name. Bondo was there with me, and I mean that kid was. He was. That's all we talked about was how the tone he had and just how amazing. Sometimes he sounded. it works. I think I've heard Stevie playing. Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan used solid state amps. Yeah. Sometimes it's just what's there. Mm-hmm. Can't be picky. Sometimes. When you think of the great guitarists, like you know, like think Les Paul, like he was just putting things together out of nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, have you like, ch- like Todd? Have you like changed your the, you know, the amps you use like over the years and like kind of landed at this? This amp combo, because I mean, I if, like I've done that two amp, you know, thing, and it's it is pretty awesome. The tone you get out of it, and the my, my yeah, fan, I mean, it's pretty awesome when you get that going on. Uh, for a while, I just had a total, totally crap. Well, I w- when I moved, to, I moved to Colorado like my second year of college, and all my pedals got stolen the first night I got there. Oh, so, <laughs> for, did for you leave time. them in your car or something? What happened? I did. Oh, <laughs> small town Ohio. I did. I did it. I took uh, I took my electric out, but it just didn't. I don't know. I I think I left the pedals and they were like in a suitcase, kind of hidden. And then my acoustic was in the trunk, but my trunk wouldn't open. It was, it was broken. It could only uh, be open with a key. So luckily, they didn't get into the trunk. But um, they stole the pedals. Uh, so, anyways, I was like anti gear for a while. I was like, fuck. fuck this <laughs> I don't Not my choice. Anymore. Yeah. Um, so for a while, I just had a bad Fender Champ or something like that. A little those are one. good, though. I mean, um, those are good amps. And then a couple years ago, I bought a Bugera, like the. Oh, paint. okay. Yeah. Vintage, I don't know, 722, it looks like. That's pretty nice. It's heavy. Very heavy to carry around. That's a um, thing. Yeah. Is so, it like a 212? What is it? 
I think it's just one twelve, but it's just one twelve. It's just a big one. Um, it's like because I've got the, the Fender. It's the twin. It's got two twelves in it. It's like seventy or eighty pounds. It's stupid. <laughs> It yeah. is so stupid, but I'm like, I gotta take it. <laughs> Nothing else I have sounds as good, and it's just like, I'm I've got a little stage one twelve solid state Fender, and it's just like, no. I convinced myself in my bedroom that it sounded all right, and then I took it over to C Squares for a jam session. I was like, nope, this doesn't this doesn't do it for me. Not even close. Yeah, I just kind of like the I like the sound of the little the little Supros. Those are great. Yeah, too. Those are um, great amps, man. Sugar Dave's got one that I covet. <laughs> so if we like switch the conversation over, like how, how long you been with this band, Todd? Um, I mean, with the band, probably it's it's uh, complicated because we kind of started playing right before COVID, mm -hmm. and then I don't know what happened for two years. It was weird. Um, so I guess maybe I guess maybe two or three years now. So are how did you go ahead? Are you the primary songwriter? For yeah. the band, yeah, yeah. So you bring stuff, ideas in, and kind of like orchestrate it, or do just people add parts? Or can I offer an explanation? Because I think that uh, Todd was a solo artist for a while, yeah. Um, and this is kind of like the first time, like I said before, when we started, this is the first one that you've done with other people, right? Yeah. And why? Why have you been reluctant to do that? Oh, uh, musicians are crazy. Yep. Because <laughs> I didn't they're... want to speak for you. <laughs> they're a little unreliable. So, you Flaky. Know, I'd, yeah, I'd meet with a bass player and for the first time, and he'd show up an hour late at my house and be like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" He's like, "I'm sorry, dude. I left my bass. I locked my bass in my car." Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like this doesn't bode well for the first meeting. Um, so just little things like that just kind of so... turned me off after a while. Nobody really kind of took it as serious as I did for a long time. After after a couple of times, you're like, all right, I'll just do this on my own. What um, is that about so musicians that is it the fact that they know how hard it is or it's the like, why? Why are they so flaky? It's interesting to me. I mean, I've been in many bands and it's always flake, Bill. It's like a bowl of frosted flakes every time. Uh, I don't know. I think there's some mental health issues, pro <laughs> probably. Oh well, yeah, uh, substances, I mean, substance abuse, and mental health issues are probably our yep. thing. Yeah. Well, I think it's kind of like I mean, I uh, there there are a certain like it's kind of like clientele, you know, like I have a pawn shop, and there is kind of a certain clientele, and musicians are kind of the, like they're they can be an extreme, you know, like they're just almost mad scientists sometimes, and just don't have their shit together most of the time. <laughs> That's just yeah. the type of person that a, a musician is usually. I don't know why that is. That's a really good question. I wonder if somebody's done some kind of study about why are most musicians just fucked? I think there's <laughs> an addictive there's an addictive thing to music, like little dopamine hits every time. You know, it feels good to play music. So I think that people who like those kind of little highs That's a good point. are attracted to to playing music. That's my guess. That's a damn good guess. No uh, study needed. You solved the riddle. <laughs> Put that on TikTok and get ripped apart. Yeah. <laughs> where, uh, where are you from originally, Todd? Or uh, like Fayetteville, high Ohio. Where's that? Fayetteville, Ohio. So it's kind of north of like Ripley. Um, anybody get any takers there? Mm. Sort of, sort of east of Cincinnati. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what else is close. Um, yeah there's like a there's one stoplight it's pretty small okay so like out not quite uh east enough to hit bainbridge but like in between there and cincy maybe some something like that i think so yeah okay you know where like chillicothe is yeah or yeah. Hillsboro? yeah it's kind of before you get to that okay as okay. far as east the east direction Okay. I've just got to say this before I forget. Brendan Bondo sent me, I'm not the same, the link to it. Like when it came out, I don't know what year that was, 2000. Which one? 18, I think. Yeah, yeah, 18, 19. And it's been, a, it's been a permanent on my playlist since. Oh, cool. And I got Thank a feeling, you. I got a feeling that quite a few on the new album is going to be on my playlist too, because it's just killer. Oh, the, Thank you. the two Appreciate redos it. from the EP. You yeah. redid Thorns and Treble. 
with the band. Mm-hmm. And I first I was kind of I need to go back and I did listen to them yesterday, both of them. I can't I can't say that I prefer one over the other. Like that's usually like when you've heard bands do something like that before. Like yeah. oh here's here's an acoustic version and they did a full band version of it and it's, sometimes it's like mm, maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think that applied there. So good job oh, on cool. you, man. Thank you. Yeah. But, uh, so I think we we're talking about it before. So like bringing songs to the band. Um, was I don't think it was it really worked like most bands do. It was mostly me like recording a lot of stuff at home. Pretty much everything I would record everything but the bass and the drums. And you would would you kind of dictate to them what you wanted? Kind of, yeah. But they, I, I, I'm sure I, they know what to apply, you know? Yeah, both very talented musicians. And I was generally never like, or very hardly like, uh, no, that's, I don't like that idea. So did you all but record it? Like, how did you record it? Did you go somewhere? Did somebody help you? Um, like most, most of them, most of the tracks, those beginning tracks were my house. And then we would go to either the drummer's house who kind of had a recording studio at his house. Um, so who like sound engineered it? Like did the drums and mixed it and that Chip, kind of thing? the bass player. So the bass Chip, player Chip mixed it and yeah it was kind of he did great like, man oh engineered it yeah he did amazing the is the drums on that because whenever i first listened to it like whenever your stuff comes out i i just put it on a playlist because that's just how i listen to music i, I don't yeah. sometimes i'll listen to an album straight through but anytime somebody's like listen to this i just add it to my listening playlist and it'll just kind of come up randomly yeah. He's like, you listen to the last song first. It's I don't know how you're listening to this, but <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. But, you're like, what? but it's what? like that way I can kind of stack it up against air quotes professional recordings. Yeah, you know what I mean to see if it holds up. That's kind of the same thing I do whenever I record something. Mm-hmm. But like that is like one of the hardest things to do is make a whole cohesive mix to where it sounds comparable to all these guys that throw thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars at a record. Yeah. And it's like that dude, that record sounds awesome. Like it really I, does. I assume you're really proud. I would be. Yeah. Yeah. It turned out really cool. I mean, he worked, he worked his butt off on it for sure. You know, and put up with all my emails of like, Oh, let's tweak this and let's tweak this. And let's tweak this. You know, rev, <laughs> this rev, is rev. too loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know rev rev a or f or whatever you know like the the reference you know what i'm you know what i'm saying like uh-huh. it wasn't just yeah. like oh this is good on the second mix it would be like the sixth or something like that uh-huh. um, they sounds great though he's good at that dude that whole band sounds great was there another guitarist or was it all just you yeah just me really yeah um I mean, yeah, I don't know. We we had like one special backup vocalist for Love on the Screen. Mm-hmm. And then the rest was just the three of us. Yeah. Do you think it get to a point? I know like when me and Bondo record music, by the time you're done, you're like, I am so sick of that song. <laughs> Do you get it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think people who don't play music realize I have listened to this 50,000 times in the process of recording it. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, we kind of did it over the two year, two and a half year period. So like, yeah. now I can go back and a couple of the songs I'm like, oh, I, I do like that. Yeah. I haven't, you know, I haven't heard that in a while. So that's nice. Um, but yeah, for sure. Just thousands of times. And and Chip, you know, he mixed it at his house with, with his wife there part of the time. So I'm sure she is just like so tired. Mm-hmm. Of <laughs> <laughs> My wife can relate. <laughs> yeah. Do you drive around a lot and listen to it? Like, yeah. Do you and like we talked about this before? Like people who enjoy listening to the, their own recordings. Like, I legit do like listening to my own recordings. It's like, well, especially while I'm doing it. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like some people are like, oh, I don't, I don't want to hear myself. Why would I want to hear myself? It depends on the day. I feel like. And how many times you've already listened to it? Yeah, some nights you'll, I'll catch myself in the right mood and, and I'll be listening to it after a gig on the way home and I'll be like, this is great. And then mm-hmm. other nights, it's not so much. I'm like, what, what am I doing with my life? Isn't it cool when you do something and you think it was so bad and you leave it for the night or whatever and then yeah. when you pull it up, you're like surprised. Like, oh my God, that's not bad at all. Yeah. I can't yeah. tell you how many times I've done that. Just like... There's I, also I'm, the there's also the opposite of me. There's the opposite of man. That was so oh, great. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> so how do you yeah. capture your ideas, Todd? Do you like do they just come to you like where you're just messing around? Do you sit down to write every day? Do you think of lyrics in a car? Like how does it kind of come to you? Most of the time it's just I'll sit with a guitar and come up with something that interests me on the guitar and then just start mumbling to it. Yeah. And a lot of the times those mumbles turn into real lyrics. Mm -hmm. I'll listen back to it on a voice memo on my phone or whatever and uh, so you, go from there. So you just try to get a pentameter down first then kind of work in yeah. words after um, that. It'd be okay if nobody ever heard those recordings <laughs> of the mumbles <laughs> of the... Sound like you're doing an Eddie Vedder impression. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. yeah. <laughs> that, so, so the voice memo on the phone. I do. Yeah, that's what I do too. I'll just put the, always every time I sit down and play guitar, I put the, the the recorder voice recorder on, and hopefully, yeah, I say something cool, or or play something cool. When you switch phones, you just hope to God it transfers over oh, to where I back that. that. I back that shit up. Like no one's business. <laughs> like yeah. Because it's there's gold in there, really. Because it's yeah. the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, you don't want to set up a recording rig. You just want to press record and capture it, type of thing. Yeah. I, I used to do that, but I found myself getting lost. Like I would record so much, I'd be like, I want to listen to that one really cool riff I did. And after I started naming them six all, six hours, and that helped. I named them all like the Dragon's Moon or something. You know, name it something. Moon. You don't name them like Eleanor. No, it always has to be something Bonnie. ominous, you know, like, or what I think it sounds like or something. You know? Goat's mane. No, that's a good some, one. some of the times when I switch phones, it like, it won't keep that title. So I'll just end up with like 300 no name things that I have to listen to and grab myself nuts. Like, this is crap. This one's crap. This is me. <laughs> song for a wedding. This one's crap. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, there's an organ. There's, there's something about capturing that that's. Or, you know, you gotta like, and there's so many. I bet you have like ideas you've never even used. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I kind of have a tendency to kind of jump all over the place style wise, mm -hmm. I feel like, and I have to narrow it down for albums a little bit to like to make sure it's not too even, even, I mean, even when I finish an album, I'll be like, are these songs, do these songs go together? I have no idea. Um, and that's even after thinking like of, of pairing it down to a certain sound. Why do we have to have an album that sounds all the same? I don't like, even why like do we albums have that sound all the same. Me either. <laughs> well, you like them to be cohesive. You like at least yeah. for your vision for it to make sense. I don't know. Why I couldn't start, you... If, if a band's play... putting out multiple albums, it's like, like Stone Temple Pilots or Tom Petty, they never made the same album twice. You know, I mean, yeah. their, their whole that album could sound kind of similar, but then the, the next go-around is, is... I'm going to tell you why you don't different. have to do that. It's called the White Album. That's what I'm going to tell you. You don't, we don't have to do that. The White <laughs> Album is 900 different styles. Yeah. If you think about it. That's it's like a thousand percent true. Yeah. It like, really is. You're like, but it's also the Rocky Beatles. Raccoon <laughs> and why don't we do it in the road? And, you know, it's like, I will. And, it, you know, those are all, but people accept that. Why does, I guess there's something about, well, people don't listen to albums anyway now. Well, so. that's, Let's establish something. I think I believe we're all Beatles fans here. Do yeah. you ever meet people who say they are not? Like I've listened to them and just mm -mm. I, don't get I have. I <laughs> met them. I don't like them. I met. I don't them like them. Met them. I've met, met those them. people and it blows my mind. Yeah, there's something in there for everyone. You don't, don't have to like the whole catalog as, as humans. But yeah, I met. I played at people's weddings, just classical guitar or whatever, and. Uh, and be like, okay, don't play, don't play any Beatles. Like, no Beatles? What? Like, yeah. What's wrong with you? And my wife, my wife says she doesn't like the Beatles, but then we'll hear a song and she'll be like, "Who's that?" I'm like, that's oh, that's she's one Beatles. of those people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You have to yeah. love them. I, I, <laughs> if you think about the lyrics, seemed really cool. I, I could understand why somebody wouldn't want yesterday played at a wedding because it's you know if you yeah. if you think about the, the well, lyrics. That one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got to sing when I'm 64 at Sugar Dave's wedding. Yeah. Atop a mountain in Gatlinburg. <laughs> it's glorious. There were bears all around. There were. <laughs> and aliens. Um, I'm trying to go any better there, but I, I can't do the voice. <laughs> <Yeah. like. laughs> 
I kind of think like one of the favorite parts on your record was the low as I ever want to feel the, oh, that acoustic shuffle. And then you guys just like everybody just, it just gets killed. And it just gets <laughs> ran into a brick wall and it's just, you know what I mean? And then it slowly starts to, to me that yeah, that's, that's a cool moment. Yeah. The, uh, that one felt a little bit, uh, red hot chili peppers to me. Like, uh, on a military, I, I don't mm. know why, but it just, it something made me think of that. Not to say that was an influence in your world or anything like that, but it was, uh, um, not particularly for that song, but I'm a big Chili Peppers fan. Sure. Mm. Um, yeah, that was kind of the point of that song, just getting like uglier and uglier, like more things building on top of it, almost like swallowing up this whole song by the end of it. Um, which is weird because the end of the song is sort of like a happy note. Mm -hmm. the, sun, the sun will shine after a hard rain uh yeah that was i, I like that song it's were the uh yeah were the claps real or were they digital claps do you know i can't remember what they were i think they might have been the distorted claps it's hard to get real claps yeah i know <laughs> sugar's watch i wanted to have uh boots marching on a song and this he watched this dumbass stomp trying to record stomps for probably two hours <laughs> yep. sweat dripping off of it. he's like no, i think we got it man <laughs> Woo. one more like we'll just layer them all together it'll be exactly what we want it's just like this is so stupid <laughs> like the next day there's one of those moments it's like yeah. This is was a bad idea. We just wasted two hours. Oh, we gone. Yeah, yeah. 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 my hips hurt. Like, yeah. But yeah, uh, living. There's learn. a pl there's a plugin for that. I'll sh I'll show you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's way easier. Yeah. I Did know. you guys That's just needed to use thing. a stomp box? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was there. That's the most dad I joke I've ever heard you say. I know. <laughs> it's just too easy. Sometimes low hanging fruit you gotta take. It was them, slow. <laughs> I finally found a stomp box that, that works like a like a thump pedal. You know what I'm Yeah, those are awesome. Yeah, yeah Sugar yeah. Dave used to have one. I had, uh, I had, one. I had I the know. pucks. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. pucks converter. I've had those. I just like that. I love them. I, I had the kick and the snare. I got the, the wazinator, is what it's called. Oh, I've I've got a wazinator. Yeah, I like it. So expensive, but they're, uh, yeah. I mean, it's really hard to get a good sound. Like, tell us what the Wazenator does because I'm not, um, I don't think it's upstairs with me, but it's pretty much just like a flat, <clears throat> flat pad that's like this big. It's uh -huh. wooden, they're from Australia, and uh, it's just, it's just hard to get consistent sounds because you're always stomping a different spot, and the uh, little, okay. the little uh, V shaped ones or whatever will, will leave your foot as you're stomping on stage, which sucks. Um, so it took me a while to find a my cousin made me one out of like a shoebox once and that was you know uh cramp causing pretty much <laughs> so I finally sucked it up and paid some money for one and it works pretty well just plug well, the guitar cool. cord into it hey mumford and sons it's no joke man <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he stomps on it with his heel doesn't he don't some uh, people stomp on them with their heel mm -hmm. that would make sense to me like i would think i'd have cramps if i tried to do it with the front of my foot it seems like most people that that do that all the time eventually retire it um mm. like shaky graves wasn't he doing that for a while um yeah so they'll play like a bass pedal or whatever like a, a bass kick that's hitting a, a suitcase or something mm -hmm. yeah uh -huh. while they're on stage and then like after three years you're like dude this sucks <laughs> so much work is there a name for that? Like people that like, it seems like that should be a name. Like not just, there's a guy that played guitar and stomped on the thing. Like that should be a style. It should have its own name. Just so we don't, don't have to describe the act. What's it called when you play in public? Buxing or what's it busking. Called? Busking. busking. It's like a busking type of style type of thing. Yeah. It's very New York street. You know, you guys doing that. I don't know. Yeah. I tried that in when I lived in Savannah. I was, it's like it, I was too shy for it or something. It felt weird to just like show up and sing to no one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like you're to totally throwing yourself out there and you ex expect to get nothing back, at least for a good little bit or yeah. for most, I would imagine. At least for gigs, you're they're asking you to be there, but for you to show up in a park and it was kind of strange to me. And just start playing for anyone who's, and then maybe someone stops and watches for a minute. Yeah. And it's like, yeah that's that is a weird i've never done that i've never tried that 
I got I got paid once to play in a park. Um, and when I got there, they were like, oh, you, you get to, you know, I thought I was going to be in this corner of this tent. And they're like, no, you go, you can go and sing to the different tables, like walk throughout the park. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> Just wander up on people singing. A, when the moon <laughs> hits your eye Just like mariachi or something. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's, it's kind of. Weird. What's the worst place you? That sounds like the worst venue ever. What, what's the worst <laughs> venue you've ever played? Oh, that's a good question. Um, not sure. Yeah, what what are you doing like Saturday? Like... <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a good one lined up for you. Yeah. <laughs> I played underneath a fishing shack once, like a and it was oh, dirt, awesome. and we had to like put wood that we found as the stage and it was like these it was in the middle of the country was it a private party top gig yeah or? my buddy set it up and that's what was, my worst gig was too was a private party yeah it was a fishing under a fishing shack in the in the middle of greenup county and i mean i've got we've got thousands of dollars of equipment and we're just playing and during it like we're just jamming out we're playing all kinds of covers and playing original songs and stuff and I remember at one point I was playing a little on the watchtower and the fireworks were going off. It was awesome. Yeah, I felt, felt great. <laughs> but at one point, the guy at the party was all drunk and he had the party. He goes, hey, man, we're trying to play guitar hero over here. Could you guys stop playing? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, we're really playing guitar here. Like, we're actually guitar heroes over here. Like, what do you? It was so I was. It was this, of course, this one of like there's a crazy, you know, Appalachian party, you know, like moonshine flowing and people were just crazy. I mean, it was crazy but anyway, yeah, I remember playing a gig and uh, it had a like us playing and then right next door was like a dance club and they kept coming over like mid playing. It's like, could you turn down a little bit? We're oh, yeah. bleeding over into there. We're trying to they dance did that, like, over here. Ten times. I'm like, why did you hire us? This is a nightmare. <laughs> I played a, I played this like uh just for like realtors. So I was playing in the subdivision under a tent, but um, I don't know. They set us all up under a tent, but there was like a beer pong was like literally five, four or five feet away from me. So they kept like bouncing balls into my gear. Yeah. I'm playing solo. Um, so that was pissing me off first of all. And then it started raining and we're like, Oh, we're okay. We're under the tent. And like, all of a sudden, like a river came down the road of, of just water and it splashed and went through all my gear, went out through my pedal boards and stuff. And I'm like trying to pick everything up and freak out. And uh, and then I was like, OK, I guess the gig's over. Stop raining. And she's like, oh, you should play some more. After I packed up all my gear, she was like, you oh, should my God. Um, was she just hammered of, or I don't know. So the beer pong continued bouncing the balls. Uh, it, it paid pretty well, but I got it through like a website where they could review me. Uh, so I was afraid of getting a bad review. So I just had to like suck it up. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. There's like a million gig stories. Like oh, yeah. can, can you play something we can dance to? I think that actually was said at that gig too. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. said at every bad gig. Yeah. The whole yeah. like you're a jukebox thing is real rough too. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. You play, can you play, you know, and you're like, no, no, it's not a. We're not a, yeah, it's not like bar. it's not like people go to a comedy show and say, "Do take my wife, please." <laughs> do do this joke one first. Yeah, yeah. I know Bondo's hot button with the playing gigs is getting beer anywhere remotely near his amp or guitar, and I don't probably. blame him. I'm right there with him. I've, He's like, <laughs> I've loosened up a little bit. It's probably it was probably just certain people with beer around my yeah. <laughs> it's like no you you get back over there you can but <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, you know that where, where you've played casey's a few times you know that is a high risk maneuver <laughs> so just, yep. but, and you know what i should have probably like looking back on playing at a lot of the places i played like i don't know if i, I probably would never have taken my eyes off my gear like uh, maybe the world's just different now. Maybe I just see it different, but it was like, then I would be like, yeah, those guitars will be fine over there. And they were, <laughs> but like looking back is like, you're just lucky. <laughs> mm. Yeah. yeah it, just so many times I could have lost gear. Oh, it would have took five seconds for someone to grab a $2,000 guitar and exit out the back door without, you knowing. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
So as we approach the uh, 10 minute mark, or less than 10 minutes left to go in the egg timer, I don't know if you know this, Todd, but when the timer goes off, we're done. So uh, this stuff. is only third episode, so it feels like after the first one in it, I wanted to pick up the second one with the, you know, the same kind of panel. So would you maybe want to come back and, and do something with us again? Maybe not the next one or, you know, we'll see. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, also with that being said, is there anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to promote anything? This is probably isn't going to be out like too awful soon, but if you got anything coming up. Um, I don't know. It seems like on Monday I'm going into to the studio to record uh love on the screen just like an acoustic version with the viol with the violinist mm -hmm. um so that should be out that would somewhat be cool. soon i'm trying to like uh because that song is like the most new wavy like on the whole yeah, thing for sure um definitely sold from cars with that song um or just that kind of a vibe mm -hmm. i felt yeah, a little so, bit more black keys ish from that one yeah yeah well the chip the bass player's a big Black Keys fan. I think he's in a, a Black Keys tribute band. Oh, dude! I oh, do the way that the, the, that bass sounds, the the yeah. the fuzzy bass, like that just sounds cool. I saw the Black Keys this summer. That's this last summer, and they had such a big production. It kind of took away from it a little bit. Like it was so big. They had like seventy-seven people on the stage. Oh, and I, I, the I two guys had that many. That, people that's on? a little hyperbolic statement, but they had a lot, like <laughs> a lot of people, and it seemed. I just kind of wanted to see them. Did they do any part of their set with just the two of them? Like not really. School? No, they uh, had like this one slide guy come out who was his name was like like Busky Crowerson or something. I don't know. He's like you know, I don't know, it's not his name, but he was like real old, you know, and like, he's a legend. You know, this is I don't know. <laughs> Jimmy Chip. He wasn't Senior. Busky Crowerson, but yeah, he was like you could tell that they barely got in there. Yeah. You know, and he played it's like but you know, you could tell he was old, like he was, you know, but it was still good, but it was so big that I, I don't I kind of just wanted the, the, the Black Keys, just them playing, but they're a big production now. Of course, they're, you yeah. know, they're playing with Band of Horses, which it's, they're, uh, they're an awesome band. What was the so, venue, though? It was uh, Riverbend, so it was big, so, mm -hmm. you know, like Riverbend's a big venue, so it's like, I don't know if they would have really... I'll bet they're kind of, you know, ready to try more people on the stage, I guess, though. Oh, they right? had a bass player and horns. Because and they did Madison Square Garden, just the two of them. And... That's got to be weird. Could you imagine just two people playing the Madison Square Garden? I mean, I'm sure the, well, I guess the White Stripes probably had people, too. I, mean, I, Andrew, think, they, Andrew kinda, played. I think they kind of split up their their set. This was probably like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. but they probably they split it up to, like, band, and then they would do a part of their set, which is the two of them, to appease people like you. <laughs> yeah. right like me yeah. that's once i just want the basics i don't need all this fanfare yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know what i expected but you know. you know what i totally cut you off todd when i asked you if there's anything you wanted to say <laughs> so <laughs> forget it yeah no you're talking about the love on the screen no it's not that important also, to you. i'm trying to, ready to move on. on i'm trying to put out like two different versions of that song so like a spanish -y one with violin and then also a bluesy like delta bluesy slide version of that song so that's uh, that'll be out there hopefully by the time this comes up well that's cool that's soon after i'll be looking forward to that thank you thanks for checking out the yeah. album and stuff guys i appreciate that so yeah it was i awesome. like it man when you guys play out is it usually around cincinnati or where yeah it's yeah <laughs> it's hard <laughs> It's hard to get him to church. Well, uh, it's, it's in Richmond, Virginia, so that's where I live now. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I've moved around a lot. It's confusing. Home of Dave Matthews. So. You get sort of an ass yeah. crowd down there. <laughs> I think I used to live in Charlotte, North Carolina, so that was like NASCAR. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. World. Yeah, that is NASCAR. That's yeah. Was it Lowe's? Super Speedway? It was used to be. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Cause that, I think there is a track near me, though, now that you mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, there is one in Charlotte, track. and then North Wilkesboro was not too far from there, you know, back when it was yeah. going. Yeah. I don't know if this has been asked, but, like, if, when you do play upcoming gigs and stuff, is it just you, or is it you with the guys that you recorded the album with, or mix most and match? Of the time is, most of the time it's just me. Yeah. Um, I play with them when I can, but they're also in, like, five other bands, each each yeah. of them. The drummer's doing sound for uh, 
I don't know, Pop, Papadora, Papadozio, Papadozio. Does hmm. that sound like a band? Sure. He does sound for them all the time, and they tour around around the country. It's like kind of a I don't know what it is. It's some kind of a jam electronic band. I think they play a lot of like the the jam band. Yeah. Festivals, but they're different. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like, like was that the fake name that Rusty had on Vegas Vacation? Papadogio. <laughs> oh, I think you're <laughs> something like that. Yeah. I might have just made the name up, but I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's what they're called. Sounds like a great name though. Yeah. Sounds like a song for C Square, maybe. Yeah. What was it on Christmas Vacation or one of the other ones? Vegas, Vegas Vacation. When he won Vegas. the car. Yeah. Papa, he had to get a fake, a fake Papa ID. Giorgio. I Papa Giorgio. It. I was like, Do Dogio. I was like, that sounds a little weird. Papa Nick, Papa Gord Giorgio. <laughs> I, tried, I, tried, I tried to watch a European Vacation the other day on TV. There's some really inappropriate stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like yep. every movie from back then has those yeah. moments. Yeah. Like every movie. It's like the... The game show host or whatever is really like checking out the daughter. Yeah. She's oh, very yeah. young. It was weird. <laughs> not age well. The, the, the game show host is like 100 years old or something like that. Yeah. She's like but that's also how the game show hosts did then. Yeah, like, that's pretty true. Who was the one that kissed everybody? Richard Sam Dawson. Man? On Richard, Richard yeah. Dawson. We've talked about him several times. It's like he's always got to squeeze them and kiss them and... Oh, maybe that's what I was like a parody of him or something. It has to be because that's just it seems like every game show was kind of like that when you saw it from the early 80s. And stuff. I imagine Hollywood back then was way bad. That had to be to terrible. Yeah. Even like it's still terrible. Right. Well, I mean, we can't talk. We're not in Hollywood, but I hear tell <laughs> there are yeah. some things that go on. On an yeah. unrelated note, I was just getting ready to sniff a marker and I remembered I was on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I better not do that. I'm on camera. Just thought you all might want to know that. I'm, I'm glad you told us about your inhaler yeah. problem. Stuff happens when you talk about the 80s. Uh, yep. <laughs> Sometimes you have intrusive thoughts, and yep. you know, congrats on you for not acting on it. Do you, do that? you just that did it, thing, or do you just sniff things in general? <laughs> yes. I like to smell stuff. I can't help it. <laughs> well, like if I see something on my wife's face or something like that, and I pick it off, I'll smell it, and she'll be yep. like, "That's weird, dude. Don't do that." <laughs> but I'd like to know. <laughs> Todd, that is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, Todd's my I wonder, people. I wonder my if people. it's chocolate or if it's something else. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know. And sometimes, and, whenever you're in a position where you definitely know it's something else, you're like, <laughs> "What is? Is that? That can't be? Is that?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you do it again. You go back for another yeah, one after you dry heat. Make sure it was that bad. Yeah. 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 No, my finger. Then you try to share it with everybody. That's like, here, smell yeah. this. It smells like an ass. <laughs> Check us out. <laughs> oh, bad. Sorry. That was the crudest moment. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's short worthy. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> yeah. So do you ever do any like podcast stuff or like you do yourself? I'm sure you've been on some. I've been on a couple. Uh, I have a podcast called The Tools of Songwriting. Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of happened during COVID. It's kind of whittled down a little bit, but there's some there were some new there's some new ones out. I'm trying to trying to get some more out there. But I interview songwriters and just go pretty pretty in depth about their process and how they write stuff. And yeah, that's called the Tools of Songwriting. I think we got like ten episodes or something like that. It's cool. Some of them are solo episodes talking about Steal Like an Artist is one. Of, I think that's the first one I did was about that book. Such an important book for me. Who was that by? Austin Cleon, I think is the guy's name. He's like a, I think he's a Chillicothe in person from Ohio too, actually. Oh, how yeah. ironic. Kind of crazy. Small world. Yeah. You ever hang out at the he Sherman House? I don't think so. Where's that? Is that Chilcoth, a Chillicothe? Yeah, or uh, what was the other one? Suds Down or uh, anyway. <laughs> I, I'm going to list every bar in Hill Coffee till we hit one. You know, it's like, no, I won't do that to you. <laughs> Did you guys ever go to uh, like uh, Seven Caves or like Serpent's Mound? Is that close enough for you guys to I, go to or no? I I passed right by it. Oh, it's, it's time up. the egg timer hour, y'all. All right. Oh, yeah. so we'll have to pick that up next time. Cool. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for being here, Todd. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for Until next me. time. Later, dudes. Peace out. Uh. Talk about stuff